The Louis luggage that came to Boulder, Colorado, when Coach Deion Sanders first arrived, it seems like a couple of those pieces had some time expiration dates on them. And it looks like some of these athletes have decided that they're going to take their luggage and go somewhere else to continue their collegiate football career. Now, we have some who think that, you know, them getting into the portal, they don't want to smoke. They're afraid to get out there and compete. Well, I think, it's, I think that's somewhat false. I honestly believe it's something a little bit more than what people are really paying attention to. Y'all going to get a little pissed off with Coach on this one. It makes me know never mind because we're going to have some fun with this thing. We're going to talk about it. But I got to tell you right now, welcome back, everybody. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. I hope everything is going your way. I hope everything that you prayed for, asked for, has come to fruition, things that you were looking to see happen for you in your life, all of that stuff is going down. I hope right now you're getting comfortable. I hope you're getting your drinks, you're getting your, you know, your, your dinner, your lunch, whatever it is that you need to get to sit yourself down and watch this either on your cell phone, the television, or even on your computer. Matter of fact, if you're getting comfy, get your pillow, get your blanket, you know, go ahead, get get, get all snuggy up in that thing. You know, make sure you, you're nice and comfortable. Because, boy, when I tell you this here, it's, it's going to sting a little bit. It's going to sting a little bit. But, guys, the one thing I want to make sure you do, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. This, of course, is another episode of Blow the Whistle with your host, Coach Walker. This is on Tomorrow's Sports Network. These are segments that we do several times a week. And sometimes, normally we give them to you on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes you might get them on Wednesday. You might even get a double up. But, guys, Coach will go ahead and drop this thing to you. I think I got another video that's been in, 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 in rotation now trying to get situated on these YouTube streets to get up there for you guys for the past four days. So I do apologize on uh, not getting that content out to you because, guys, I, I put some work in on that show that I want you guys to see. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to talk, talk about this thing because this stuff here has just gotten so far out of touch and out of control. I think it needs to be discussed. And, you know, one thing we've all come to realize is that the transfer portal is going to be what it's going to be. I mean, we're going to see athletes going to jump in that transfer portal religiously. Every time the daggone floodgates open for athletes to take their talents and go get the transfer portal to move on and go somewhere else, guess what? If the situation is not right for them where they are, they're going to go. They, they are going to go. And I know some of you are sitting there like, man, this just don't make no sense. Why are these athletes leaving? And... As the days went on and we began to hear about Cremani McClain, he jumped in the transfer portal. Alton McCaskill, the fourth, he jumped into the transfer portal. Everybody, you know, you, you start getting all of these different uh, narratives that was going on out there. You know, you got some folks howling about they're scared to compete and they, they don't want to play and they don't want to do this and they don't want to do that. Now you got Savion Wilkerson who came over with Coach Bryan from Jackson State. And you got Dylan Edwards. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this young man played for him in the truth football program that he had years ago. So it's, it's a lot to really unpack with this thing because I'm just like, wait a minute. You got athletes that's looking to play for Coach Prime that Finally came to the realization, said, you know what? I got to do an about face and I got to bust a move and do something that's going to be beneficial for me. That's going to get me to where I'm trying to go. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to be selfish. And people get mad when folks get selfish. When they don't go along with the game according to how everybody wants them to go along with, they get a little upset because, you know what? These guys are the ones putting in the work for them to get to where they're trying to go. So if they don't have the opportunity to do it, they will be a fool to let time just go ahead, blow on by, and not do something to make sure they position themselves to secure their own futures. Now, I know myself, and many of you out there, are some fierce competitors. And to hear the narratives of, you know, hear that narrative that these athletes don't want to compete. You know, they, they, they don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to compete for playing time out there on the field. Understand, guys. I, under, I, I understand you, you know, if, if play, you know, position by committee, whatever have you, especially in that running back room. I mean, you lost the, I mean, literally you lost some, some stable backs in that running back room. Yeah, you got a couple of guys coming in here and there that, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. The production is not there. I mean, we, we're gonna you, you're gonna see this thing open up time and time again where you're going to have athletes that's want to come, that's going to want to come into the program, but they don't have that cachet of time on the field to do the things that they need to do in order for them to get that playing time. But last time I checked, any competitor that wanted to get, get out there on that field and play, be it basketball, baseball, football, soccer, you name it, they wanted the ball in their hands if they was on offense or they were able to score a point for the team to win, 
or if they was on defense, they were looking to get out there and make a play to keep that team from scoring on them that would allow the team to get the win. Now, I'm looking at Del, uh, uh, Savion Wilkinson and Dylan uh, Edwards as far as these two young men that, that were in uh, in the I'm about to say Jack State, in the Colorado Buffaloes running back room. And I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking like, wait a minute. Savion Wilkinson, as stated before, this young man followed Coach Prime from Jackson State, came over to uh, Colorado University to, excuse me, came over to the University of Colorado to play football for the Buffs. You had uh, Dylan Edwards, another young man, came into the program to play football for Coach Prime. And Dylan Edwards, he got out there and, and did the daggone thing last season. He led, he led the uh, uh, running backs rushing the ball last season. I mean, matter of fact, this young man was catching flare passes out the backfield. I think he was the uh, number four receiver on the receivers list. He was fourth in receiving. This young man catching, I mean, he catching passes in space. And I mean, when I say lighting folks up, boy, like a pinball machine. I mean, if you give this young man a sliver, a sliver of daylight, he's gone. He's he, he's out of there. And I, you know, looking at some of the games, I wonder like why they didn't use this young man a little bit more in that offense. I mean, it, there was always there was always some type of chaos that was going on. I think the uh, what's that? What's the word you guys used last year? The saboteur of the previous offensive coordinator. You know, guys, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, when 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 all of this was going on over Jack State, we we seen this type of. We've seen this type of play happen before. We've seen this part of the playbook before where, you know, the 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 it wasn't necessarily a saboteur, but it was more so the offensive coordinator uh, in the beginning. You know, he started off kind of cool and he kind of fizzled out. And then you had uh, uh, the, now the head coach, T.C. Taylor, go out there and rip off 60 points against Alabama A&M. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start seeing things just change and go in different directions. You're trying to figure out, like, what the heck is going on here? But – once again, it's just looking at everything that's happening, it makes you wonder, like, what's really going on here? And I'm looking at the athletes. I mean, again, like I stated, Dylan Edwards caught four touchdown passes last season. Now, this young, like I said, this young man can run the ball out there in space. My God, he, he's dangerous. That's all I'm going to tell you. That wheel route or that daggone flare route, you can forget about it. That young man, he catch that pass, he's gone. You're going to look at the back of his jersey. He's taking it to the house. Edwards rushed the ball last season 76 times for 321 yards, averaging 4.2 yards per carry. And I think he had one rushing touchdown. Now, when we move over to Savion Wilkinson, looking at what this young man was able to do last season. But before I get to last season, I want to talk about what he did when he was at Delaware State as well as Jackson State. Because that young man was the bell cow that was running the ball in both of them programs. I mean, think about it. Delaware State, he rushed the ball 220 times for 840, with 848 yards, 850 yards, eight touchdowns, average of 3.9 yards per carry. He get into the Jack State system. This young man runs for 1,167 yards, uh, 200, uh, 226 rushes. He had nine touchdowns. He was averaging 5.2 yards per carry. Funny thing is, as you can see, this young man, his production increased based on the type of offense that he was in for him to do what he needed to do. And a lot of times when he was over there at uh, Delaware State, that young man went and got the tough yards where he needed to get them to keep the chains moving for Delaware State that time. He brought that same mentality to Jackson State, making sure whenever he got that ball, he's going to blow that thing up, let you know, hey, listen, fire in the hole, you're not stopping me. I'm running through you to either score a touchdown or move them chains for us to get a first down. When you look at the young man's production over in Colorado, it was like he had a fourth of the rushing attempts that he had at Delaware State as well as uh, over Jackson State. Now, I get it. You got a, run, you got a room full of running backs. Heck, you had um, Arthur uh, McCaskill, the fourth, who was the he set a record in rushing touchdowns over the University of Houston as a freshman. This young man was out there balling. I mean, he was toting that tater out there on the field, letting everybody know, hey, listen, I'm going to be a problem out here on this field. Y'all going to have to figure this thing out to see exactly how you're going to stop me. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe the young man might have fumbled one time last season, or he might have fumbled a time or two in which you, you started not to see him getting that ball as often as you thought they were going to give the ball. But again, According to how the offense is set up, I'm just going to be real with you guys. Shador Sanders is going to be the show. Shador Sanders is going to sling that ball around that daggone field 
45 to 50 times. Y'all might, might will get ready for it. It's going it happened last season. It's gonna happen again this season. That ball is gonna be in that young man's hands to put that ball out there on the field, spin that bad boy for people, for the receivers out there to catch them passes, for them to do whatever it is that they need to do to win games. Now, the only thing with that is when you look at these running backs that decided that they wanted to bust a move and go somewhere else, if they not get no touches, what do you expect them to do? You can't expect them athletes to just, oh, okay, hey, uh, I, I, I do want an opportunity to go play professional ball too, but I'm going to sacrifice for the sake of that. I'm, I'm not really, you know, uh, infused into this offense in the manner which I thought I would be based on how everything is structured, based on how the game plan is set up. You can't get mad at them athletes for that. You cannot. Now, I, I get it. Everybody's wanting to put out a story to say, you know, hey, man, these guys, they quit. They don't, they don't want to smoke. They don't want to, you know, they, they don't want to get out here and compete. I'm like, listen, I get it. Grown folks don't go, grown folks go do grown folks stuff. But when you look at Xavier Wilson, who rushed the ball for dang near what, 2,000 yards in two seasons, get the, he rushed the ball 53 times for 190 yards last season, four touchdowns for Colorado. What are we talking about, guys? What, what, what are we talking about? Again, like I stated before, I'm just looking at what what's being shown. This ain't no this ain't no hate. This ain't you know coach trying to take a dig at nobody. This is just straight up and down what what's been shown to the masses. You can't get mad at what's been shown to the masses because it is what it is. But understand that these guys have they they want to get to they want to have opportunity to play in the pros just like everybody else do. Now, a lot of these, some of these athletes, they're leaving. They, they're not saying nothing negative or anything. Yeah, you got a couple of athletes that they've had enough. Enough is enough. And the, the narratives that's been put out there on them, they're starting to speak up for themselves. And then, you know what? And there's no, it's nothing wrong with that because I, I got to be honest with you. Dealing with college collegiate sports, it's a dirty game. Regard, no, no, no way, shape, or fashion you want to slice this thing it's a dirty game because you're always going to have somebody out there that's going to feel the way they feel. They love it. The coach is beloved. No one can say anything negative or wrong about the coach because if they do, they come for your head. They got the hammer. They're going to come down on your head. Like, who you think you're talking about, sucker? You can't talk about my coach like that. And you know what? People get that too. But if the athletes is moving on and they ain't saying much of nothing, why would you want to clump them in a whole bunch of madness that's unnecessary? And when you say that they don't want to compete, you know, based on trying to get time out there on the field, hey, if you're only getting, say, on average, let, let, let's use Savion on here. He had 53 touches last season. You guys played 12 games. 12 going to 53 four times. So you touched the ball four times in a game. Come on, man, what are we doing? What I mean, let, let's be real here. You, you, I mean, do the math. Do the freaking math. You played 12 games, he got the ball. He had he carried 53 times last season. He's seen the ball four times a game, four and a half times a game, four, 4.2 times a game. I mean, really? I mean, is that what we're doing? So this young man is out there on the field being productive. He's supposed to just accept that and say, okay, cool. I'm just going to go with that and keep it moving. That ain't cool. And like I said, you got Dylan who's been out there busting. I mean, he's been busting his behind, doing the daggone thing, letting everybody know, hey, listen, he's a household name too. I mean, guys, I understand, you know, where everybody's coming from. You know, a lot of folks, they, a lot of Buffalo fans, they upset. They talking real greasy and slick about these athletes. But I'm like, you got to understand one thing. That's not how it really rolls. I mean, be real here. I mean, think about it. Let, let's look at it from like, let's, let's look at it like this. Ronald Isley and the Isley brothers. And I know many of y'all out there, y'all y'all listen to the Isley Brothers, y'all know who I'm talking about. Before, back in, was it, in the 70s, when, when they were a group, I think they were the Isley Brothers. And then when Mr. Big became that guy, all of a sudden now it was Ronald Isley and the Isley Brothers, right? So if you got Ronald Isley standing out front, which before it was uh, the Isley Brothers, if you got Ronald Isley standing out front, and then you got the brothers in the back, I mean, come on, guys, at some point in time, everybody's going to be sitting there looking like, wait a minute. Everybody forgetting about me. I, I, I want, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a part of this thing too. So all I'm trying to get people to understand is say, listen, this is what it is. And these athletes, they want an opportunity to get out there and compete. It's not that they, they are afraid of the smoke at the college that they were at. No, they just want a, they want a serious opportunity of being able to compete. That's what that is. But like I said before, grown folks going to do grown folks stuff. 
And I mean, I gotta get I give Coach Prime his props because this ain't no dig or slight of hell. This is this is the stuff that happens. I mean, <laughs> when you first came, you told everybody, hey, you was bring your you bring your luggage, you bring Louie. Your luggage was Louis. You was bringing it with you. And you had a mass exodus hit that transfer port. Had a couple here and there that did stick around and, you know, see if they can play underneath, the, you know, the Coach Prime umbrella and, and, and move this thing forward. But now you got athletes that you brought in, recruited, that are now doing an about face in. I'm going out the door. I need to go somewhere else. And give Coach Prime his props. Phenomenal athlete. He was a phenomenal athlete doing the daggone thing, doing what he needed to do. He's a damn good motivator. I got to give him that. He knows his X's and O's. Can't take that away from him. I would never say that the man doesn't know the X's and O's. But there's something missing in your recipe, coach, for you to get these athletes, for you guys to do what you need to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, the recipe that you think, that you thought worked while you was in Jackson State, that, that recipe ain't going to work up here. In, 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 in Boulder. It ain't gonna work in the Big 12. It, it's gonna it, it's gonna take a little bit more fine-tuning and tweaking for you to for you to get it done the way you want to get it done. But what I am saying is, is that all of the athletes coming out the transfer portal, you're getting a bunch of headaches that you know you may or may not want to deal with. But then too, you're gonna start seeing a lot of athletes that's gonna come into the program that's not really getting the production or didn't get the production out there on the field like many would think because they were big name because they come from a big name or come from a big name program everybody ooh you got a you got a kid from over there from uh Washington University ooh you got a kid from Oregon ooh you got a kid from Florida State ooh you got a kid from Miami and then when you sit and look at the, what what did this kid do and then when you go dig back into it to see what's happening with him now you sit and look like that dog okay well wait a minute but then you're trying to find a way to plug and play that's where it comes back to the whole development piece. Where are these kids getting developed? I'm just asking questions. I've, I've asked these questions about when Coach Saban was over at Alabama. Same thing with Jim Harbaugh when he was at Michigan. I've asked these questions about, heck, even some of the SWAT coaches. I asked the question as well. Where is the development coming from? Everyone acts like this transfer portal is like the, the big three Chrysler Ford the GM, where you can go ahead, put these put these players on the assembly line, you get out there, you get you pull whichever one you want off the assembly line, you put them in your program, and instantaneously everything's gonna work the way it's supposed to. Ain't happening like that. It's not. Because now it now the the I hate to tell everybody this, but that transfer portal is about to become a trick bag. Watch what I tell you. Two years, everybody, it's going to be some folks mad as I don't know what. And the NCAA going to come back with another daggone rule where they talking about they're trying to make some more changes. Again, the I'm sure the athletic director over at Colorado, he ain't too happy right now with everything that's going on, especially with that new rule coming in place where basically college programs are going to be hiring mercenaries. That, you know, for them to come out there and just do whatever it is that they need to do, hoping that they can get the right players in there for the right mix and blend for them to do what they need to do. The only thing about it is now, this is where you're going to see big bank take little bank. And what's going to happen is you're going to find out which institutions really got that bag when it comes to getting them athletes and bringing them into their program. Because after, like I stated before, the athletes, they want to play. It ain't just about getting a bag no more. They want to play. Some of them do want to play, while some of them, they do want their NIL money to go ahead and try to take care of mommy and daddy right now because they just don't have it. They never had it. And if this is their way to get it, guess what? They're going to do what they got to do. But the one thing that I do ask is that some of these coaches out here that coach these athletes while they were in high school, I want them to begin, I want them to understand that the, the interviews that you do, the, the sound bites that you give to people, they're out there for people to see exactly what's going on and just be truthful about these athletes and not try to murk up, you know, uh, uh, make them look a particular way when things go in a different direction. Because, you know, one, one uh, high school coach in particular, you're behind sat here and said one thing about a, a, a specific player, but then when you go back and do a little further research, you find out, wait a minute, this man spoke highly about this young man. So where did this come from? Get what I'm saying? So th these are the things that I'm talking about. When you make up the narratives and all these other things that's going on, you got these athletes now, they're beginning to see things in a different light. And now it, it makes them feel some type of way and they want to move on. Yeah, you can say, oh, they're soft. Oh, they, they, they can't handle criticism. They can't do this, can't do that. Listen, man, 
Don't sit here and tell me it's raining when somebody's sitting here, you know, pissing on my shoes and saying, hey, ain't nothing wrong with the Cheerios. Go ahead and eat up. Man, miss me with all that. Understand one thing. These athletes, they're, they're beginning to understand how this game go as well. And there's a lot of coaches out here, including myself, that had that old school mentality thinking that, hey, we can go ahead and do things the old way, the way I was coached, the way I was brought up, and it's going to work. Not with these new age kids, you're not. Not, not with these new age athletes. It's not going to happen. It's, it's not, it's not going to happen. So get ready for the, uh, uh, the chaos and, and the mass confusion going on with these athletes changing up year in and year out. Like I stated before, uh, well, I didn't state it before, but I'll state it now. The athletes want more than just being on the yearly uh, football season series. Well, these athletes want more than just the yearly football season series, hoping they go see themselves on, on, on TV or whatever have you, so that they can go say, hey, you know, look, see, I was on TV, I did blah, blah, blah. They, they, they want more than that now. They want to be able to play a major role. And, and if that's not going to happen, guess what? They're going to move on. They're going to move on. And, you know, one thing for certain I understand and, can, and I really see Coach Prime doing this, the flair the flair and fashion in which he conducts himself as far as when it comes to the athletes wanting to bring them into the program, he's going to find, he's going to find them athletes in the, in the, like those diamonds in the rough and bring them into the program. But the one thing I'm going to say is this, Coach Prime, you're, you may need to, you may have to change up your recruiting, um, change, up the, change up the manner in which you recruit. And which somehow, some way, you're gonna have to go sit. You're gonna have to get personable. Excuse me. You're gonna have to get personal and go sit in front of them parents. Not necessarily in Boulder. You're gonna have to go to them and let them know what time it is, really. Because coaches now, they get ready to do any and everything that you guys are not willing to do. Not just Coach Prime, any coach out there. If you're not doing it, they're gonna go do any and everything that those coaches are not willing to do to get them athletes to come play for them. So, guys, all I'm saying is this. I'm hoping that Coach Prime in his second season is able to get the Buffaloes over the hump in which they're able to go, as he stated, go play for a national championship. Get into that playoff so they can go play for a national championship. I hope it happens. We will see. With a spring game this weekend, what a heck of a daggone week, you know, past couple of weeks, past month to go on, and you got athletes that's coming in that may consider wanting to come play there because they're going to have a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of dancing going on, and I know them narratives going to kick in again, but I'm going to tell you guys this. One thing for certain, two things for sure, don't think them athletes don't. One thing for certain, two things for sure, don't think them athletes don't reach out to the former athletes that was there to ask them questions about what's going on. Just being honest with you. But, guys, Coach going to go ahead and get up on out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead. Oh, and by the way, for all the athletes that's out there hitting the portal, Coach, wish you guys the best of luck. Make sure you take advantage of your opportunity. Don't let it slip through your hands like sand. Until next time, be the one and lead.